Hello, everybody. Um, it's become a kind of a, a nice tradition that we are talking uh, about uh, quality of metadata in these uh, gatherings. Uh, this year, we want to present you a tool we've been working on uh, in the context of Clarin Plus project, the so-called curation module, uh, and some first uh, numbers uh, we gathered from, from this tool. Uh, so, yeah. It's the outline. I need to be fast because I have very many slides. Uh, so, so, uh huh. Nice layout. Um, so, why did we uh, create this uh, this piece of software? Uh, it's basically about uh, in real, tight relation to the VLO and the, the well-known problems of the VLO. And the VLO is basically about resource discovery. And through the complexity and flexibility of CMDI, uh, the many problems we we encounter there. Uh, and there was there is uh, a lot of uh, previous work on, on this topic. Um, yeah, so we already know some numbers. Uh, or, or in, so the metadata number of records, MDI records in in the VLO is is growing nicely. So we are somewhere around nine hundred thousand this around this time. It's floating a bit. So. Uh, and we have the many different uh, public profile, uh, CMDI profiles, uh, as well as many components, uh, which yeah gives uh, quite a complex uh, data space to find your way in. Way in. Um, so, what is the curation module? Uh, the idea is uh, that uh, a tool for for curation and normalization of this uh, and, and quality assessment, especially of this CMDI. Uh, metadata. Uh, actually, it's a bit of a misnomer, misnomer right now, uh, curation, uh, because it's really primarily doing metadata quality, the quality assessment of the metadata. Uh, and the idea is to systematically and automatically collect statistics and information and assess the quality of the, uh, of the CMDI records. Um, so it's a, it's a web application. As, it's primarily a Java library uh, that has an API and also a, web, a simple web application on top of it. Uh, and the use cases where, where this software can be used. Uh, so it could, could be used by the metadata author when he's creating new records and want to assess the quality of the record he's creating. Uh, for the metadata model, when he wants to see the quality, assess the quality of their profile, or if they are to choose a new profile, then they can have a look at the existing profiles and the quality of theirs. So it can help them to decide. Uh, also, repository administrator to see all the overall quality of the collection of the, uh, in their repository. Uh, as well as for the metadata curators on the kind of VLO side of the uh, of the process, uh, to to identify the problems uh, in the in the big uh, data set, um, and this kind of ties in, in, in our, as I said to our previous work. So this is a picture from two years ago where we already talked about this curation uh, box uh, that should be part of of the of the pipeline from harvesting the metadata to, to getting them into the metadata catalog and having the, some validation and, and quality checking in between using vocabulary service and the semantic mapping uh, based on the, on the concepts on the, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and informing the important is the upper part, uh, informing also the data providers uh, about this quality through some kind of curation reports. And this is from previous year. Uh, okay, no details here, but, but a similar idea of having a kind of a VLO dashboard where you can gather all the information from the different uh, uh, parts of the process from the, from the harvesting and from the validation and normalization into one nice uh, application where you can easily find your way in and identify the problems. So let's get to the actual application. How does it work and what does it do? Uh, so you can either um, check your specific one file by simply inputting, a, uh, so that's the first one, uh, where you have a specific form where you just put a URL of an of a instance of, or a profile and you get it uh, assessed uh, immediately. Or we also pre-process a lot of information about the profiles and about all the collections that are in the, in the VLO. Uh, so that you can uh, inspect, uh, that are ready to inspect there. Uh, so let's go there one by one. Uh, so the easiest way to to check one one single record is to take from 
from uh, the VLO, the, the URL to the actual record, to the raw CMDI record, uh, put it into, hmm? yeah, put, uh, put it into the form of the curation module and go SS instance and you get uh, immediately uh, a report. This is not very nice, but it has a lot of information in it. Uh, it has an overall uh, scoring section where it gives you the numbers so th for the individual aspects criteria that were assessed. Uh, the, and there are then specific sections on different aspects of, of, the, of the record. So one is on the resource proxies, uh, the other is on the XML, overall XML validity and, and asp some aspects of the, of the XML uh, altogether. Then there is a separate section on the URL validation so the links, the resource proxy links to the resources. Um, and there is a separate uh, detailed section on the facet because the facet coverage and the mapping to facets is kind of the, one of the big issues we have in the VLO. And I really very much like this section uh, where you have the, really a detailed information on uh, which uh, value from which X path in your given metadata record through, through which concept was mapped to a given facet, right? So you really see the path, how these all the pieces of the, of this, of the, in this complex mapping process work together and uh, also optionally some normalization if, if that uh, occurred. And then you have some statistic below giving you overall number, uh, how many facets are covered uh, or are missing. Um, and in the end, you have a summary of the issues that were encountered. So some are warnings, some are really errors. For example, when a URL was not reachable, uh, or if there is XML schema validation problem, and so on. Uh, then, okay, so that was for the individual record. Then a uh, separate section is on these pre-processed, uh, pre-computed numbers for the profiles, because the quality of the, of the record uh, partly also relies or depends on the quality of the, of the underlying profile. So if I have a bad uh, coverage, facet coverage for a profile, then I can't get any better uh, in the instance. Uh, therefore, there are a few, uh, few numbers we collect for all the public profiles that we find in the, in the component registry. Um, uh, similarly, for the, for the collections. So collection means the individual so from the individual data providers, the, the uh, bunch of the, of the CMDI records that the uh, Clarion centers provide through the OIPMH. Uh, and there you have some, again, scores like criteria assessment, but also some uh, general numbers, statistics, for example, about the size of the overall data set, about number of records and so on, which are not strict criteria, but are still interesting to see, to, to kind of get an understanding or feeling for, for the data sets. So you see, for example, that there is a, a single data, uh, data collection which uh, has six gigabytes only in the CMDI records, right? So it's, it's obviously there is a lot of information in, uh, only in the, in the records themselves, uh, let alone the, the data probably. Um, uh, yeah, and there is also some basic integration with, our, with my earlier work with this SMC browser that gives you an overview of, of the complexity of the CMDI profiles, components, elements, down to the, to the concepts. Uh, so from a profile, you can jump directly into this uh, view of the, this, this graph view of the, uh, of the profile. Uh, then, uh, oh God, okay, sorry for the, for the layout. That's the conversions. Um, but here, kind of the, what, what is this, how do we compute the score? What are the, what are the criteria? So you can think of many things to, to assess. So for the profile, we basically have just three uh, criteria. One is, is the profile public? The other is how many elements are annotated with concepts? And the third one is the import, the, this, this facet coverage. And they are all normalized to one, so you have, altogether you can get three. Um, uh, okay. Hmm. Uh, the, for the instances, for the CMD records, you can altogether get a 14, uh, a score, overall score, score 14, three you get from your prof, from the underlying profile, then there is one restriction on the file, file size, uh, information on the, in the CM, if there is complete information in the CMDI header, for example, <laughs> reference to the MD profile, if the MD self-link is there and so on. Um, and, and some more, I mean, we can then investigate uh, after, after the launch in the, 
in detail in the session, in the demo. Um, uh, so, okay, and now I try to get in five minutes to some actual numbers we, we already got from the, uh, from the curation module. Uh, so you get uh, this assessment criteria, the scores, but you get also the information on the facet coverage, uh, on, the, on the concept coverage, and also all these kind of statistic, uh, statistical numbers uh, of the, on the collections. Uh, first picture, uh, the score distribution for the profiles. So we go from uh, 0 0.7 seven to best profile almost three, so quite a spread. So the scoring seems to work uh, rather well and the average is, is two, around two. So it doesn't sound that bad. Uh, but obviously we have to be very, uh, these are just uh, some numbers if you wish, right? So these are more or less arbitrary. So the criteria seem to make sense, but uh, we normalize all the criteria to zero to one uh, so you have to be very careful interpreting these numbers. Uh, so if you look at more detailed, so what is on the top, who are, which are the top profiles, we get a top 10 public profiles regarding score. Uh, and I think this is already kind of a very interesting list for, for a metadata modeler to decide which profile I should use. Then I would, as a metadata modeler, I would actually go down this list, right, and see uh, I would try to pick the first that fits for me from the uh, con conceptual or thematic point of view, but these are kind of the best ones, uh, at least regarding the, the, the criteria we, we discussed. Um, then we, and from the overall quality of uh, point of view of the metadata in, in the VLO, it's obviously interesting to see how much a, a specific profile contributes to the, to the overall size of the, or to the overall data set. Uh, so we combine the information on the quality of the, of the profile with the number of instances of, for given profile. Uh, and we, we see some, some jumps there. Uh, but here we need to kind of point out the, the issue that probably the, the, the criterion of, of a profile being public and uh, contribute, this criterion contributing one third to the overall score may be a bit too harsh, right? So because uh, we can discuss this, but so you see that, for example, the uh, profile song would immediately go to the to the average one almost two if it would be published. So if I would be the owner of these profiles, I would uh, simply make them public and make the biggest uh, improvement of the quality of metadata within five minutes or or ten seconds. So <laughs> um, uh, okay, and, but we need to kind of have a look at this. So the, the public and private profiles is, is, is kind of a uh, discussion there. And we see that almost a third of the profiles and third of the instances uh, uh, are uh, private profiles or are based on private profiles. And if you have a nearer look on the numbers, you may wonder, this kind of doesn't sum up. I said at the beginning we have 194 profiles and here we have 38 and 67. So uh, that doesn't sum up. So the situation is like this. We have 194 public profiles, we have 105 used profiles, uh, but we have only 67 public used profiles. So we have another 127 public profiles which are not used at all, or not, at least not encountered in the VLO. Uh, and on the other hand, 38 uh, profiles that are used but are not, not public yet. And I think this also, yeah. Uh, so one obvious or the usual kind of reason to not publish the profiles is this the need to if I to ch oh, okay my time is up so I won't explain that one uh, uh, similar numbers for the for the or, uh, statistics for the collections so there the spread is actually not so bad so it seems rather good we are between nine point nine point three and and twelve with an average of ten point eight uh, but obviously there are probably some uh, uh, cheap uh, score criterions to, to gain. Um, the same for if we match it against the number of collection, uh, number of records for a given collection. Um, so overall, the, the numbers are not so bad. So the question is why, why we have this problem and still the big problems in the VLO. And I want to still uh, have a look at this one thing. So the, the, the facet uncoverage, the big issue we identified, kind of the most disturbing issue we identified last week, uh, last year, uh, that many of the facets are not 
So many of the records are not covered by in individual facets at all. So it's like partly it's uh, two, three thir fourths, three quarters uh, of the records cannot be found by a given facet at all. And uh, so the improvement uh, to this year is rather modest. So we have some minus, some small plus, and but in general a bit minus, but not not really some significant change, except for the, if you look into this resource type. Uh, where the normal change is also not so big, but uh, when we employ the special uh, additional mapping from uh, getting the information from the profile uh, name, uh, we got to a, quite a significant uh, reduction there. So I think that is the way to go. I can't explain here more. Uh, and the last thing uh, to... Yeah, so this is kind of again uh, plotting the, the the score, and so so concentrating just not for the overall score, but just for the, the score for the facet coverage, so which is below, between zero and one, uh, and plotting it against the size of the collection. So you see some big collection with good coverage, big collection with, with bad coverage, small collections with good and bad coverage, and so if we are to kind of now concentrate on individual collections, then obviously this would be the way to start, right? So big collections with bad coverage. And the similar setup we see for the profiles, uh, where we should probably start from top, uh, bottom up and, and from right to left, so to say, to, to have a look at that. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, then many things we are planning for the future. Uh, nicer visualizations, better, better output of the information. Um, calibration of the scoring, obviously, so probably the facet coverage should be weighted more in the overall score, uh, etc. And we are welcoming any other suggestions. So we will continue working on this. And I want to here use the opportunity to thank, uh, thank very much to, to Davor, who implemented this application. Um, yeah, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you for presentation. Uh, I hope uh, there are already questions. Yeah. Um, Matei, maybe you could um, comment on the reason why you think there could be a large jump, jump in, in the quality when you um, publish the metadata or uh, the, the profiles, or in other words, why do people not publish their profiles? Well, the reason, I, well, I, the main reason is the problem with, uh, so any, every time you change, uh, you, need, you have a need to change the profile. Once you publish it, you need to create a new profile. And that could be also one reason, okay, it's closed already, for the many public profiles that are not used because probably people created a profile and then they need, saw a change, need to change and they need to create a new version of that profile, publish that one, but the old one was kind of deprecated or, or was not used anymore. And in this respect, actually, the CMDI 1.2 actually brings a good solution to that because it introduces the, a good life cycle for the profile. So you can deprecate an old profile, which, you, uh, which we can re reflect here as well, and also the people selecting the profile now see, okay, this is a deprecated one, I don't need it, and there is also a pointer to the new one, so that you then select the, the, the newest, the, be the best one, so to say. But, yeah. Um, thank you very much for, um, for this uh, work, which is important. Uh, I think metadata, metadata quality is extremely important for, for the VLO. But it was not entirely clear to me how much of the uh, how many of the problems were uh, due to um, bad SIMD metadata quality that is harvested on the one hand, or uh, the extraction of the information for the facets on the other hand? We have uh, repeatedly found that um, that information that gets to the VLO is, does not correspond to what we actually have in our SIMD metadata. Some, somehow, uh, Get the, lost on the way. The, yeah, the specific the specifics of of the the profiles and the components that we use in Norway are not entirely taken into account. It seems like so. So can you sketch you know what? Yeah, might so the be? problems can be on many levels. Yes, yeah. and and uh, that kind of you need to look into each each of those each of the problems you encounter and then see where kind of go down the line and see. The original record is the information there. Is it get, get, does it get lost in the in the mapping process? So we, do we need to adapt the facet to concepts mapping, and so on? So there are or the normalizations type as well of the of the individual values. Uh, so this only gives us the numbers and possibility to identify where are the problems, and then you still need to do the work of 
tracking tracking the problem actually. And but we are aware of the specific also the problem in the Clarin, and we will uh, Clarin know, and we will look into that. Yes. Maybe I can add a bit on the Simply 1.2 feature is also that you now can pre-publish uh, a component or profile, which means that you can still be able to edit while it's even public already. But it's then just users need to be aware that potentially the profile can change, so it's not frozen. Yeah. And I was wondering, you in the in the the tool, you can also already paste in URIs from uh, private profiles, isn't yes. it? So you can already check them. But you cannot. While I'm working on a a, a file, on a I cannot upload it yet. It was on your to do list. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that you can also upload. Now you can only put a link there, but it's easy you to add an uh, input okay. form. Yeah. yeah. And we will do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Would it be possible as an individual center to get uh, an individual evaluation of the metadata we provide because you seem to know so much more about it than we do <laughs> and it would be really helpful to just have a list of um, things that may have gone wrong in our interpretation of SIMD or whatever, would that be possible? That's actually possible right now. So you get it either in the pre-computed -pre collection, so the collections are basically by providers, so you can have a look at your collection. Uh, and have a detailed report there, or you can run, take the, the library and run it on your uh, locally. It's a Java library where you just put a, a directory saying these are my CMDI records and please give me the report oh, over this okay. data set. So I just need to understand that better. Yeah. Thank you. You can have a look done in the demo. Hmm. Thank you for the presenter once again. And.